uh, very blessed morning to everyone. Um, I'm very excited actually to moderate this uh, our first UM Star series of 2021 and ever, I think. Yes, this is our very first one, UM Star series, where we, we invite um, our top University of Malaya management to share some insights, some big picture that we usually do not get um, the access to as in uh, as a big picture as a whole. Yeah, so um, we have arranged this session and Prof. Nur Saada has kindly um, um, willingly shared her time, her precious time. Uh, the title of today's uh, star series is Aspiration of the University for Research Development and Innovation. OK, um, what we are looking forward, we are all looking forward to hear firsthand from Prof from Prof Nur Saada herself is the aspiration of our beloved university in this early year of 2021. We hope that by having this uh, insight, this greater big picture insight about our research, uh, University of Malaya research landscape, what are the plans um, and aspirations, Prof Saada, um, we can leverage and we can better plan our whole year and inshallah the whole of our career as well on how to make use and fully utilize our role as um, our country's premier research university in the region. And some insight on how we could uh, think of our research activities as an innovation as well as something that is more meaningfully uh, done for our own capacity building and for our, our university, our society and our nation. So I look forward to listening from Prof. Nor Saada myself. And without further ado, um, I will invite Prof. Nor Saada. Um, I would like to remind the participants, if you have any question at all, um, you can just type it in the meeting chat section on the right hand side of your screen. OK, just click on the meeting chat um, uh, icon on top Okay, and just type it down there. I'll try to get to your questions when the time when the right time comes. At least we have a list of questions already. And uh, if you would prefer to um, raise your questions in person okay, orally, then we could also do that. So without further ado, Prof. Nur Saada, I will pass the floor to you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning. Thank you, Dr. Azza. Yeah. Uh, and thank you, everybody, for coming. I was okay earlier, but now I'm getting nervous because, you know, there's been such high expectation of what I wanted to say. Uh, but, uh, and, I, and actually, uh, I didn't realize that this is the first one, uh, you know, of the series. Uh, I think ADAC actually kind of like misled me into thinking that, you know, there have been other PTNCs who have already spoken. But um, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Uh, so um, in tandem with, uh, you, know, uh, you know, our university being a research university, um, you know, research would be one of the, uh, you know, uh, component that is quite important uh, for uh, the university. That's not to say that teaching and learning is not important. It is also very important because it's one of our core job. But we have to remember that as a, an academic uh, in the universities, we have uh, several, uh, you know, functions to play. We are, uh, you know, not only uh, teaching and actually uh, molding the future generation of the nation, but we also expected to actually push, uh, you know, our nation into, uh, you know, um, a better, uh, you know, harmonious, I believe now, sustainable, you know, developed nation. So, uh, you know, and in order to do that, uh, we need to generate, uh, you know, better income, etc, etc. So, research is actually quite important for us then. Uh, you know, uh, hence, uh, you know, um, I think because of that, uh, you know, the government has uh, earmarked, uh, you know, the uh, universities in Malaysia to become uh, with a with a uh, any status of research university. Now, you know, Simlaya is actually um, uh, I'm not sure how to say this. We are um, very lucky, I suppose, because uh, we have actually began our research work 
uh, quite early compared to you know the other universities. Of course, uh, we are the oldest university, so it's expected as such. But when the University of Malaya was uh, uh, formed or built, it was actually as a teaching university to actually uh, you know produce uh, you know intellects and uh, leaders for our nation. But subsequently, uh, you know, we moved also into doing research because we know that research is actually very important, uh, you know, particularly also to help us in teaching so that we can actually push uh, the boundary of knowledge in the university. That's that's what uh, I think we're supposed to do. So uh, when we had, uh, you know, uh, when we got the research university, we were lucky because we already had some, uh, you know, uh, some things in place. OK, uh, as compared to the other universities, we did not have a, a, a good uh, uh, infrastructure in terms of uh, research management at that time. But uh, because we were the first one, we learned and, uh, you know, uh, we had uh, at that time UPRND, if, uh, if people uh, as old as me to remember that, you know, but, uh, you know, uh, so that was the start of, uh, you know, IPPP originally. So with the with uh, the with the uh, infrastructure, uh, you know, of uh, research uh, management in place, uh, you know, when we have uh, when we receive the um, research university status, uh, then uh, you know it is a lot easier. Not to say that it's very easy, but it's a lot easier compared to other universities for us to move forward. And um, so we have, Alhamdulillah, we have been able to move well, okay, in terms of our research progress. Um, uh, people remember early on when we first uh, received our research university uh, grant, we actually had to, uh, you know, uh, struggle and try to actually see how we want to put programs in place. We started off, I'm, I'm going through the history first, okay, Dr. <laughs> <laughs> we had we started off with the um, uh, you know uh, if people remember UMRG grant which is uh, grants individually that you know people apply for and actually work uh, you know to to uh, you know start research because we wanted to give everybody the opportunity because although we were a research university or we had started research early not everybody had the opportunity to actually do research mainly because uh, I think we did not have enough funds to move. But the research university fund uh, actually helped us to move, so we had managed to give uh, people opportunity, a taste of how to do research with funding now. And so uh, subsequently we moved into, um, you know... Um, Hi, Dr. Chiu, uh, this is Goa. UMRG. Yeah, uh, I, I, I would like to ask you the, about the, the conference in Thailand. Oh. Is there a question? Or? I, I UMRS. Uh. So have you have you do the registration? Um, sorry uh, about that. that. I just muted the person. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, uh, you know, and then we uh, we progress into programs where we actually started uh, to get people working together instead of you know doing a single project because you know um, we believe that uh, you know uh, we uh, you know bigger uh, bigger team and more people working together will give us better output. Uh, you know, uh, as um, the previous uh, the NCP and I used to uh, like to say, you know, uh, mosquito bites. Uh, Dato Awang would like to say, we mosquito bite, uh, small mosquito bites will not bring, uh, you know, uh, things up. So we need to work, uh, you know, in bigger programs and bigger impact. So we started to move into MRG program and subsequently we decided that, okay, we have to actually look into um, uh, translating, you know, uh, in fact, you know, um, Alhamdulillah, I think we were trailblazing for the ministry. We started, uh, you know, the program which everybody is doing in NANA, FRGS, etc, etc. And then we went into a multidisciplinary, which uh, we call ourselves a UMRG program, U, uh, 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 U, UM uh, research program. Eh? Uh, I mean, instead of project, we had a program uh, and uh, uh, KPT followed us and they had TR, uh, LRGS, TRGS, they had TRGS, okay? We had that earlier. <laughs> then we had our uh, grand challenge and translational grant. So they move also into, you know, uh, subsequently translational and now they do grand challenge. We have had that before, okay? And the reason that we actually came up with the grand challenge and translational is because we thought, you know, um, we should actually move 
uh, the research that we do out. You know, we cannot just have the research uh, output uh, in terms of publication, but what is the point of having publication when we don't actually move the research uh, forward? So that was uh, the start of our translational grant as well as our uh, grant challenge. And uh, now, uh, you know, uh, everybody is talking about impact. We have actually started this impact uh, uh, way before. We did not have a grant, but subsequently we have a grant now, I mean a scheme now, where we have uh, our research impact, uh, you know, monitored by the uh, uh, cluster, the IRRG, uh, IRRG, which is interdisciplinary impact oriented so that we can actually show that our research also have impact, it would impact, you know, uh, our nation. Um, and uh, hence, if you notice uh, the tagline that is being used by uh, the PNI team is always uh, transforming, uh, currently actually is transforming knowledge, transforming, uh, transforming, uh, I mean our research would transform knowledge, uh, industry and society, because we want, you know, whatever we actually do, there would be an impact there which will transform something okay uh, we know that university of malaya is very strong in fundamental we do not want to actually stop the fundamental work because this is very important for us uh, you know to in order for us to actually move forward we have to have indigenous knowledge and indigenous technology we cannot forever be relying on uh, you know uh, foreign technology or bot technology okay so we still would like our people to concentrate on um, you know fundamental uh, hence we started the uh, faculty uh, research grant scheme uh, you know about a few years back if you remember so the grants are given to faculty so that we can have an in-depth um, you know uh, studies on some areas uh, you know so that we can uh, you know still continue our niche in the fundamental but a more uh, close niche in terms of fundamental and uh, you know uh, subsequently this fundamental uh, knowledge can be moved out into uh, translational and moved into the community or the society or you know transform uh, knowledge, new knowledge new ideas new uh, findings for example so that will make an impact for the nation so now uh, where do we move uh, uh, from here uh, is to actually um, you know show the nation that we actually what we do okay uh, as a university actually has a great impact to the society and the nation okay be it, uh, you know fundamental research or applied research or you know um, or knowledge transfer research you know whatever it is that we do okay will have an impact to the society so um, it's a not it's not something that is very easy to measure uh, you know, we are looking at it. I think, uh, you know, a team uh, comprising Dr. Amir is also try, uh, in UMKS trying to look into it. Uh, the ministry is still trying to look into it. Worldwide, the, uh, you know, the UK is looking at it. Everybody is looking at how to measure impact, but it's not as straightforward as that. But what we want to do is, uh, what we want to make sure is that when our researchers, researchers do things, okay, uh, you know, uh, they, they are very aware in their mind Okay, that you know this will somehow you know uh, be beneficial for the society and create impact, or there would be some kind of impact. Uh, I always say that you know uh, a lot of people say you know you don't know what's going to happen uh, when you do research. It's true you don't know. I mean, especially if it's fundamental, but at the back of your mind you know why you are doing this. Okay, there must be something there. There must be a reason why you're doing it. You're not just doing it for fun especially if you're using public funds okay you are doing it because you know that you know subsequently you know you'll get somewhere okay and that somewhere will provide some benefit to the society to the world globally maybe yeah we never know but at least we do this so clusters i think under the uh, able leadership of uh, prof hasib uh, has started you know a pathway to impact uh, you know, in, in uh, research grants now and we uh, subsequently now we are going to move into looking at, you know, for each of the research grant that we have uh, or put out, okay, we are going to try and map it to the SDG because we know SDG is something that, that people look at and see whether, you know, that it will impact, uh, you know, uh, sustainability and the society. Uh, we also now uh, with the new uh, STIE, the uh, uh, I don't I don't know if uh, everybody is aware, but 
It was launched by the Minister of uh, YB uh, Khairi uh, a few months back uh, on uh, the STIE, uh, the, uh, the DSTI, which is the policy, as well as the, you know, the uh, rancang, the, the, the strategic plan, uh, looking at the social economy, uh, you know, driver and the platform technology driver, uh, because uh, it's a <clears throat> what everybody is very fond of calling 10 by 10, looking at the 10 platforms, platform technology, okay, and how this platform technology can actually help to move our social economy, okay, in terms of the social economic drivers in the various areas that we actually uh, are looking at within Malaysia. So, uh, you know, uh, I would, uh, you know, really like to think of, uh, you know, University Naya's researchers uh, and University of Malaya in general to be trailblazers. Okay, uh, that means we set the pace, we set the, uh, you know, the, the 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 direction. Okay, for the nation to follow. Okay, uh, being uh, in the university, I always feel, especially being researchers uh, and academics, I always feel that we should be actually ten uh, ten years ahead of everybody else. <laughs> You know, so if we are that far ahead, you know, we are tra trailblazing for everybody to follow. So, uh, you know, um, and this is what I think we do with our research and our research output. And, you know, um, we know uh, or we can kind of like predict or, you know, um, what what uh, is going to be in the next step. And so we are moving uh, way ahead of others so we can hopefully uh, bring others to, to, to follow us in the direction that we want to move. Okay. So I don't know, Dr. Azza, I think uh, maybe um, I think uh, I'll stop here now because, uh, um, you know, perhaps there are questions. I do have some slides if you want to uh, me to present the slide, but, uh, you know, perhaps it's easier to actually just take questions. Yes. OK, thank you so much, Prof. Nusada. Just to respond to your first remark, uh, we, we did have uh, Prof. Uh, Camila last year, but we didn't name it UM Star Series. So this is the first time we name it a formal UM Star Series. Yeah, uh, we had uh, with Prof Camila um, when we were very busy with uh, first time online distance le online learning. So we had a session like this. So it's very relevant uh, with uh, with us right now. <clears throat> so good to hear from you some introduction and some history. That's I think I can I can position my entry into UM in your timeline there. <laughs> That was the I think uh, during the UMRG time uh, when I just got into UM and uh, we were the young lecturers or the new lecturers were uh, invited to submit proposals uh, UMRG proposal and was quite straightforward I must say because the spirit was to help the young lecturers and you mentioned about um, impact and um, translational work yes. So I'm quite interested in that, but I would like to see if there's any questions from the audience right now. Anyone has any? OK, we have uh, we have one from Prof City. Prof City, would you like to switch on your microphone and ask um, so that all of us can hear? OK, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Azhar. Uh, good morning, everyone, and good morning to Prof. Nosada. Uh, thank you, thank you for the sharing session. Um, I have another session going on. Sorry. Um, all right. I, I would like to bring this. Uh, you know the uh, our our you know our success that we are experiencing now very much due to a long investment. And I think HR is one of that uh, key milestone in the University of Malaya's, you know, a path for excellence. And uh, we have tried a few initiatives to do the sequel to HIR, but it, it never came to uh, realization. But uh, I would like to ask Prof. Norsada if there is any, uh, you know, new initiative in the similar spirit, but it could be a different formulation, but in the similar spirit, so that we put ourselves on a long moonshot or star shot, so that, you know, people are inspired to go far, take up challenges uh, in a slightly long term rather than annual basis, but more three years to five years to reach a new milestone. 
At the same time, we can still follow the national uh, research grants and a uh, few other grants to stay competitive. But we actually entering a new, uh, uh, you know, new group of, uh, uh, I would say, new league that we have to be globally competitive. So I would like uh, to ask uh, for comment from Prof. Nosada on this matter. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Prof. Siti. Um, Yes, um, we have to also, I forgot that, I mean, this is not very good of me, but I forgot to actually credit uh, HR. Okay, HR actually does actually, I mean, in fact, is the one that has helped uh, to uh, push us, okay, forward, um, you know, in addition to RU. Okay, if you look at, uh, you know, the trends that we follow, okay, RU have helped us to actually boost our output, research output in terms of, our research uh, publication. Well, I have the slides here if you want to have a look. And by HR also actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, enhance it by actually pushing it uh, forward. Okay, uh, and actually it 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 actually is one of the things that actually make the University of Maya different. It was uh, also able to actually uh, bring in uh, you know uh, a lot of initiatives and also. Uh, help to boost, uh, you know, what we wanted to do before, which is to have uh, the research culture within the university. Uh, HR actually costs a lot too. Okay, uh, you know, the amount uh, that we actually invested is is substantial. Okay, uh, and uh, you know, and we need to actually also, uh, you know, continue to actually invest in this. <clears throat> Unfortunately for us, you know, uh, when HR is finished. Uh, we are not able to actually raise the amount of fund that we had with HIR, which is uh, amounting to more than 500 million, okay, for a, a five-year project. So that is about a million a year. And we were lucky at that time with a million a year, we top it up with the RU, which was also a million a year. So in total, the University of Malaya for the five years actually had uh, on average about 200 million a year to do research. Okay, which was actually very substantial and very, very good. And uh, you know, everybody's happy uh, and uh, so are we because we do not have to have to worry. But now, uh, you know, times are a little bit difficult. <clears throat> and <clears throat> and uh, I'm a bit worried because, you know, um, we are relying too much uh, on, uh, you know, initiatives of, uh, you know, uh, on getting the RU funds and, you know, the local funds. Uh, which is actually very, very little. So, uh, uh, other initiative that we are looking at, Prof. City, yes, we are uh, looking at that. Uh, <clears throat> you know, for example, uh, <clears throat> of course, uh, you know, one of the things that we started off uh, in terms of the inter uh, interdisciplinary impact research grant uh, scheme, okay, that is also to actually help to uh, 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 push you know, interdisciplinary research, uh, not only within the university, but also outside. So the funding that are given are slightly more than, uh, you know, what, uh, you know, normally uh, we give under UMRG or your uh, programs, uh, you know, and, but, uh, you know, we've only just started that last year. Uh, this also, uh, you know, require for us to actually move and have uh, stakeholders within, you know, the grant. So when we have that, uh, we hope that perhaps, you know, um, we not only will have the fund, uh, uh, you know, to, you know, share fund um, from our stakeholders to actually push the research forward, but uh, also perhaps, uh, you know, uh, provide the impact that we need uh, to push, uh, or to highlight or make the university, um, like, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, more uh, visible, okay? Uh, we also this year or late last year started another program called um, under the cluster called the ITRG or um, uh, Industry Driven Research Grant. Okay, again, um, in this case, we have to have the industry partner with us, and we are hoping that with the industry partners, which uh, of which we are helping helping to solve their problems, okay, will actually bring in more fun and actually again uh, make an impact. However, um, you know, uh, what I would really like to see is, you know, instead of us, you know, solving the, the industry's problem, uh, you know, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, applied research, I would like for us to actually look at the industry's problem and create new values or new initi initiatives 
uh, in terms of the fundamental uh, you know research that we bring forward i had discussed with the uh, deputy ceo and ceo of um, crest before as also um, with uh, you know industries from electric electronic industries okay um, the their ceos uh, and they told me you know straight to my face that you know uh, they don't need us to do you know, applied research because they can do it much better than us. and i'm i'm sure they can because they have been working they work on that area day in day out but what they wanted us to do or what they wanted us to bring is the fundamental uh, research uh, output that can actually push uh, their technology forward or you know uh, value add to their technology which is something what we would like okay so uh, you know um, yes uh, you know time scientific uh, research funds are very very limited but uh, i think you know uh, being uh, academic being uh, researchers as i always mentioned you know being you know uh, most of us are i like to say above average <laughs> now thinking okay so we you know we can find a way okay we don't have to have big funds but we can move forward okay with uh, you know whatever resources we have a lot of resources uh, you know that and 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 especially when funds are limited we are more creative so i hope that you know we will be able to move forward uh, with our own creativity to actually generate uh, you know knowledge and uh, outcomes so low funds i mean usually tend to make people more um, you know uh, uh, more resilient and more innovative or creative to to survive okay so uh, i believe okay uh, we have that spirit we can move forward and uh, and uh, you know one of the things that i highly encourage okay because we know that we said funds are limited and we can be creative but we still need money so one of the things that we really uh, would like to do and uh, really encourage to be globally com competitive as um, prof city wants us to be is to actually uh, you know, move into a global collaboration, uh, form uh, networks and collaboration, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, the big industries, uh, big players out there, okay, uh, with Nobel laureates, uh, they are very happy to work with us. Uh, we have one example, uh, Prof. Uh, Dr. Ahmad Shuhaimi working with Professor Nakamura. We have many other Nobel laureates who are actually willing to help us because they have seen what we can do. Okay, the HIR has really opened, uh, uh, opened many people's eyes, okay, in what we can do, okay. So now they are, these opportunities are open for us, okay. It's just up to us, you know. Um, it would be very, uh, I would be very sad to see that the amount of millions of dollars that we spend, more than, you know, uh, close to half, close to a, well, half a billion, okay, uh, amount that we spend, okay, uh, you know, go, go down the drains because, you know, our researchers cannot move forward because there's no fund. Okay, I would like to see that with this fund, okay, we have made our name. We have been able to play at the global level. We have been able to uh, publish, uh, you know, in very high impact journals. Okay, so now we have the name. Okay, we don't have the fund, but, you know, we have, because of this, you know, people are recognizing us and they come to us and say, join their group. Or, you know let's work together okay we will work in this because what is very important for the researchers to me is their private creativity their knowledge and their brains okay the funds can come okay so you know i hope this is i, I know it is uh, not easy uh, you know but you know i'm uh, it would be very as i said i'd be it would be a very sad time for us if you know after millions of dollars we spend you know people stop their research because there's no fun there are other ways to do it, and I hope we continue to do it. And actually, still have the, the HR initiative uh, is good, but you know, I'm a bit worried that you know it makes us, um, it spoils us because we think that the money is there. So it, it doesn't make us as competitive. What we want is actually to make people competitive. So HR initiative, the idea originally was also to make us more competitive globally. Uh, to make us more recognized globally once we have this we have I mean we have many people already have HR published in nature and science and all the high impact uh, you know journals we want more of um, shall I say more of Prof Adiba you know <laughs> no, Prof Adiba out there in the world you know uh, you know when uh, she actually she doesn't actually 
uh, use much funds, you know, but she is actually doing good work out there and very well recognized. So we want more of that from our university um, researchers. I hope that uh, helps Prof. City. I also see a chat by uh, Dr. Simon Alexander Wolf, uh, Wood in terms of uh, uh, research in humanities. Uh, yes, it's not technology driven, Mr. Simon from law faculty. That's true, uh, that's true, uh, Mr. Simon. Um, you know, um, one of the fortunate thing or one of the advantage that we have uh, in this university is that we are a comprehensive university. We are a fully comprehensive university. We have, uh, you know, faculties ranging from science and technology, but all the way to law, to even uh, uh, culture, which is actually something that is very interesting. Uh, we don't need to, uh, well, to say that we do not need technology is not true because you do use technology, you know, even in, uh, you know, in law, I'm sure you use technology, you use, uh, you know, uh, data maybe to, to analyze and you do research. But, uh, you know, we, uh, we, that's, that's one of the reasons why we wanted, you know, to have interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary uh, research, you know, and, uh, you know, we actually are counting a lot on our uh, uh, you know, social science and humanities uh, friends, okay, uh, you know, on campus, especially to help us out, especially with the technology. We have, uh, when we when we do technology, scientists, um, I'm sorry, uh, engineers out there, I always say, engineers, they don't think uh, gray. They always think, they always think in black or white. To them, it's either black or it's white, okay, it's white. Go or no go, okay, because their machine either works or don't work. The machine don't say, okay, I'm just halfway through, you know. Uh, so that's why they think like that, I think. But we do need our social science people uh, and humanities people to come in and tell us or teach us, you know, that there are uh, gray areas, you know, which you can move forward. You can actually look into this. So, you know, um, we do want to have, uh, you know, uh, people uh, in, uh, you know, our social science and uh, humanities move as fast as we can with our science and technology people. Uh, so that's why, uh, you know, um, if you notice, uh, even the country we went with, uh, when they went with uh, LRGS, they insist that we have to have social science and humanities, which I always think do not work very well because, you know, it's like cutting and pasting. So you have this technology and you just cut, uh, you know, um, uh, some cloth somewhere with uh, social science or technology people and uh, humanities people and just paste them there, which I think doesn't work. Uh, okay, what, uh, you know, Cluster is trying to do now is to actually make them work, uh, not cutting and pasting, but be part of the research uh, program itself. So. Uh, in most cases, uh, you know, the uh, social science and the uh, arts and hum humanities have problems, okay? They have the problem, they can shape the problem, I mean, they can shape the the questions, the, the research questions, and the technology people can come in and say, okay, this is how we can solve the problem, perhaps using technology. So hopefully, uh, you know, we can get more people, uh, you know, to come in uh, with the uh, faculties to actually uh, from the social science and the uh, you know, law faculty to move forward. Um, whilst, um, you know, it is hard, uh, you know, um, because we measure, unfortunately, the only way we measure currently is through uh, research output in terms of your publication. Um, I have seen uh, the research, uh, I've been here long enough to see the research culture move in the social science and arts and humanities. I've seen the uh, idea of, you know, publishing your research output coming out as well. Previously, you know, uh, when I talk to people, uh, you know, they say they do research. So I said, wait, I, and I asked them where the output is. They say, well, somewhere in my logbook or in my brains, you know, but it's never been uh, it disseminated. But I've seen that, you know, now this has changed even with our social science and uh, arts and humanities. People are starting to, uh, uh, you know, publish to see that, you know, these are actually good, uh, very valuable information, very valuable knowledge uh, that you actually have generated that needs to be disseminated through publication. So I think, uh, you know, this is um, uh, moving forward. Uh, hopefully, it'll do uh, better. Uh, you know, uh, we are actually really counting very hard on our. Uh, arts and humanities as well as social science, uh, maybe especially arts and humanities, 
to help us in terms of our research pub, uh, you know, uh, output, in terms of our publication. The trends, um, I, I'm not sure if everybody has the trends, but, uh, you know, I, I've distributed it to the deans and hopefully the deans will share to the rest of the faculty. The trends uh, for our publication is actually going down. And, uh, you know, um, while uh, the arts and, uh, sorry, the science and technology are actually pushing for WAS, okay, uh, you know, the arts, we are asking very strongly for the arts, humanities and social science to publish in Scopus cited journals. And um, if you look at the trends for Scopus cited um, journals, okay, uh, the other universities, the other, we have always been the leader. But unfortunately, uh, you know, as of last year and this year, okay, for Scopus cited journals, we have actually uh, uh, trailed behind uh, USM and UPM, okay. So that is something that, that we need and I, I'm, I'm not, uh, I mean, uh, because we are doing very well in WS because all these other universities are not doing very well in WS, but we are also we are not doing very well in Scopus, okay? And all these other universities are basically uh, more focused. They are more science and technology based, except maybe UKM. But uh, you know, but there are the, the scientists, uh, the the science and technology people are publishing in Scopus, which is pushing it up. Uh, but we need uh, our our help uh, from the uh, we need help from the social science and the arts and humanities to help us to publish in Scopus so that we can push the uh, Scopus up so that we will still lead the, the, the university. For the science, I know um, a lot of people asking why are we not allowing, uh, you know, the science and, med uh, and technology to publish in Scopus cited. Okay, the reason is actually simple and I, I completely, uh, uh, I mean, uh, agree with, <laughs> you know, I used to have, I used to have uh, to be skeptical about what, uh, you know, our previous VC Tashigaos wanted to make sure everybody published in ISI, okay, but, uh, you know, I see the point, okay, of doing this. Uh, we, we want to be the flag bearer of the, of, the, of the nation. We want to be the pride of the nation. And now, especially, the nation needs us. And the reason being, uh, you know, uh, the country, the you know, uh, nation are being measured. Uh, universities are being ranked, right? We have QS, blah blah blah. Nation is also being ranked. Uh, U twenty one is the one that is ranking the competitiveness of the uh, country, and uh, the result of the U twenty one actually uh, helps to bring in investment into the country. Okay, with the investment into the country, we can move better. Our economy will be better. So recently, uh, you know, when we were doing, when they were doing, uh, you know, the ranking of the U21, actually we did go up, but it was a fluke, okay, mainly because we used data, I mean, the data that was submitted was uh, data submitted previously. And in the U21 ranking, okay, in spite of the fact that, you know, the government investment in research is substantial compared to more, most of the other countries, okay, our research output is dismal. And the reason that, uh, uh, I mean, the, this, the research output that is being measured is based on the WOS publications and also the industry linkages, okay? So, uh, uh, Dr. B.C. Prof. Hamdi and I listen in length to, you know, the analysis of, you know, what is wrong, okay, or where we need to contribute, okay? And the ministry is very aware that University of Malaya is the only university currently uh, you know, contributing to the WOS, which actually helps us in our uh, U21 ranking in terms of our research output. So we need to keep that and we also need and uh, we need to keep that standard, uh, you know, uh, compared to all the other universities in the world as well, where they are actually publishing more of WOS, uh, you know, to push yeah, their uh, universities forward as well as to push nation forward. So. For the science and uh, technology, this is what we are hoping that they will do and they will help, okay? But, you know, uh, the social science can help us with pushing the university forward, okay, in the Scopus publication, okay? So, um, I hope that helps uh, to answer Dr. Wood, uh, uh, Mr. Simon Wood's question. And uh, Dr. Sh oh, I missed that one. <laughs> Other question, Asa? Uh, uh, maybe, okay. maybe I can um, interject a bit on the topic of ranking. We hmm. academics, we want to help the university in pushing the ranking up. <clears throat> Would you like to share a little bit more on what is counted so that we can put in our activity 
in that direction to help the university as well. Okay, uh, thank others, you. You mentioned right. publication in Scopus, in WAS, industry linkages. How is that measured? And is there any other factors that we would like to know about? Okay, now um, there are various rankings out there, but the most um, popular one or the most that people use, all the other universities use as well, is the QS ranking and the THE ranking. Okay, QS ranking is more broad. Okay. Uh, THE ranking is more skewed towards um, 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 research output. Okay, so University of Malaya, there are three rankings that we're looking at. Okay, uh, one is the QS ranking. Okay, as I mentioned, QS ranking uh, is broad, but the criteria would be, uh, you know, um, academic reputation. Okay, that is about forty percent of the marks. Okay, employer's reputation, that's about twenty percent, uh, ten percent, ten percent. Then we have a uh, citation, another 20%, which is also very high. And we have like international faculty, international to staff ratio, student, international student, uh, etc. Okay, so uh, those are all about 5, 5, 5%, except for faculty to student ratio. Okay, but where the researchers can contribute most are two areas. Okay, especially two areas, which actually to me is related to research and research output, uh, which is about 60% of the QS ranking, which is academic reputation and the citation. We have no control on the citation, okay? Uh, we do no control on telling on who cites us, but the control that we have in terms of who cites us would be the amount of paper, paper we publish and the quality of the paper we publish. So that's why we actually tend to push for people to publish in a better tier journals, okay? Like Q1, Q2 for WS, and maybe for Scopus tier one or tier two, okay? So, because the better the ranking of the uh, the better the quartile uh, or the tier of the journal, the more it's read and the more likely you are being cited. And the more likely that you're cited, I mean, the more that you're cited, the, that means you are actually contributing to knowledge. You are actually, this is the impact of your output, the first impact of your output is people use your work. So, when they use your work, they cite. Okay, so, uh, you know, uh, so we need to push, uh, you know, our papers, uh, our work. To be published in high impact journal so that it will be cited and to publish in high impact journal means your paper is actually of very high quality first okay it's got to be quality then if it's a very high quality very novel cutting edge work then you know people are going to cite it okay we have many examples already we have prof saad uh, from engineering who's very highly cited mainly because his area is something that is very hot topic and he's one of the top researcher in the world working in that area we have Prof Aziz, who's also very highly cited. He's working in environment engineering, very hot topic, yes. But man, hot topic means many people are working, but you know, that means his work is up there that people are actually using and citing, you know, his output. So we need more people like that. So the more cited you are, the better impact it is, I feel, for your work, because that means, you know, it's worth something. Somebody else is using your work, right? We are always talking about Nobel laureates and why they win Nobel Prize because people use their 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 ideas or their output or their research uh, knowledge you know, to generate uh, other things. OK, the same thing is uh, we want with our researchers. Academic repetition. OK, this is also very important. It's, it carries, in fact, it's the highest mark there, 40 percent. OK, and how does academic uh, where does academic repetition come from is from us again, OK, from the researchers, uh, not only uh, not only the, the students, because that mainly come from uh, employers' reputation, but academic reputation is who will we work with, OK, because these people will be asked, you know, who, uh, you know, uh, how do you feel that university is doing? Do you think that the university is a very good university? I mean, I think I'm sure you all get this question from QS sent by your your friends or your counterpart from all over the world from other university actually give your name qs writes to you and say you know please uh, tell us about this university and where you think it ranks okay so you know that is very important and you know if we actually have very good rapport and very good collaboration with our you know counterparts or friends collaborators outside and from other university then our academic reputation will go up okay if we are not uh, we do something silly with them, uh, you know, then our reputation, of course, goes down. OK, so we need to be sure that, you know, when we do collaboration, uh, you know, we do it well. And I know we can do it because, uh, you know, um, or else, you know, um, 
those uh, you know repeti- uh, those people outside will not come to university line and say uh, we would like to sign an MOU MOA with you okay because they know that we can do it so this is where you can contribute so that is QS THE uh, because they don't look at numbers of paper per paper okay but T, uh, but QS Asia does look at number of publication per staff so this is also very very difficult for us because um, and my right is actually benchmarking on this the world benchmark is three 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 publication per staff okay per year okay three i think is uh, not really that much lah okay and not talk, not even talking about tier okay just three publications okay unfortunately uh, the university uh, we are not doing very well we can't even make three okay which is our objective quality <laughs> under qmac uh, you know, uh, the only three faculties that actually make three publication per year, four, four, uh, uh, four, four, engineering is four actually, uh, engineering, science, and uh, FSKTM for this year. The rest are below one, uh, one below two in fact, okay, one point something, and I'm sorry to say for arts and, human, uh, arts and humanities especially is below one, is point three, point two, point one, okay, per staff. So we are hoping that, you know, um, if we can increase that from 0 0.2 to 1 per staff, even, you know, for the arts and humanities and maybe to 2 for the social science, uh, you know, um, we hope that the arts, uh, the science will still help us in pushing, uh, you know, this and going more than, uh, you know, uh, 5 per year, then we'll be okay, I think, for QS ASEAN, okay? Uh, currently, we're at 8 and that is uh, at 9, that is, uh, you know, uh, because uh, you know, uh, I think uh, with the COVID, uh, mobility is slightly of a problem. So you know, everybody is affected. We are not affected as much because you know. But you know, this is where uh, you know the the importance come in. Uh, currently, uh, you know, in our uh, um, uh, QS, we are actually bank. We uh, for the past three years, we started getting marks before we get zero for citation per faculty. Per staff, right? so, uh, for the past few years, we started getting marks for the citation. That means our number of citation has gone up. So when you divide by, you know, the whole of the staff in uh, academic staff in UM, you actually get to a certain level. Okay, then we get marks. Okay, so that is why we see our ranking going up. But you know, this is a slow process because we need to build the amount of publication, the quality, the citation, right? Uh, so academic reputation is something that is very important for us. Uh, you know, our academic reputation goes up and down, uh, you know, uh, but the past three years we have been going up. Okay, uh, that means uh, we have uh, uh, friends out there, our collaborators who actually who are voting for us and say University of Malaya is a good university, which is what we want to make sure that we keep. Okay, THE also the same thing, academic reputation is slightly lower uh, in terms of 20, in terms uh, uh, that they have about 20%, but their citation per staff is higher. Okay, because they are actually only concentrating on um, on uh, on uh, research, and they used to only look at uh, WOS, but they changed. Okay, the past few years they changed, and they now look at index, uh, Scopus Index Journal, and the citation from the journals that we publish in Scopus. Okay, that actually uh, you know bring it up. So this is also where our social scientists, arts and humanities uh, researchers can help us because. You know, most of the papers that are published by uh, our researchers in science and technology, although, uh, you know, they are WS, they are also cited by Scopus, okay? Only about maybe 20% uh, of the papers, uh, of the journals that are WS cited, that are not cited by Scopus. And that includes us, so it's a very small number. But, you know, the, uh, you know, if the, our friends from uh, arts and humanities as well as social science can publish in Scopus and get cited in there, uh, then that helps to come better. So we can hope, hopefully increase the THE ranking, which is actually looking basically at the, uh, you know, uh, research output, okay? Uh, we are not measured in Shanghai Jautung, uh, which is also very important because that is where U21 actually uh, take the data. Okay, Shanghai Jautung rank, ranking only looks at research. They don't care about you know how many researchers you have, how many staff you have, how many international staff you have. They just look at your research output. But they want to know whether you have a Nobel laureate or you know a Nobel laureate alumni that carries about ten percent, which is very high. But 
you know, uh, also whether we publish in nature and science, that's also very high marks, but also they look at the number of citation and uh, basically they only look at WS. So that is a very important, uh, you know, one for the nation, for the country. Uh, so much so that even Ministry of Education now is looking into this. Uh, making sure that, you know, we do actually have output in those, uh, mainly because, you know, we have to keep the country's uh, competitiveness, uh, you know, way up, or else we don't get investors coming in, yeah. Uh, the other one that, uh, you know, Simlaya uh, participates in, in is THE Impact, okay. THE Impact is actually looking at the SDG, SDG initiatives. Again, this one, Everybody can contribute. Um, this year we are doing much better because we actually get people from the faculty, uh, you know, contributing. But you know, uh, I hope that more people are going to contribute in this because uh, this one, uh, uh, what they look at is, you know, how we actually uh, work to actually achieve the SDGs. Okay, the SDGs that we have, uh, and uh, the the compulsory SDG is SDG 17, which is Partnership for Goal, which University Malaya is the institution leading in the country. Partnership for Goal, we are very, very, uh, very good uh, and we hope to stay that way, mainly because we do have a lot of collaborators and partners abroad that we do research in, in the areas that actually contributes to SDG. So this is where, again, uh, you know, all of you can help us in playing that role to make sure that uh, University Malaya stays up Currently, we are number two in Malaysia, USM is still number one, okay? Uh, okay lah, we want to beat USM, right? So, we have to be number one. We have to be number one in everything, doesn't matter how, we have to be number one in everything. <laughs> That's my motto, okay? So, um, you know, uh, this is where I, I think all of you can help and contribute. Uh, you know, uh, have good partners, uh, contribute well to, you know, your partners uh, abroad, so that they think very highly of uh, you and also the university. And this helps us a lot. Okay. Uh, how do we get? Uh, sorry. Uh, thank you, Professor. Dai. Yes, uh, I get a lot of questions on how do we uh, work. A lot of a lot of the questions here are asking about we need money, we don't have money, and you mentioned about creativity, about being uh, resourceful. Um, we do have grants. Uh, grant office, PPGP, uh, IPPP, uh, IPPP, yes, and other avenues. Perhaps you can summarize as a whole um, for those who are maybe still unsure of the selo belo of um, looking at where to get the money, and some some even ask, do we need to use our own money and things like that. So we we would like to get some. Um, uh, roadmap, if you may say, or guidance of how, in terms of getting the resources, if okay. we know that we don't have um, money in certain areas. Right. It's, um, it's not very easy, okay? I just have to tell you, uh, because I spoke to, uh, you know, some uh, researchers out there, okay? Um, chances of you getting the grant, okay, uh, is maybe about 1 or 2 percent, okay, worldwide. And, uh, and they spend a lot of time. I mean, I, I remember talking to one professor and I asked him how, how long uh, he takes to actually write a research proposal. He said, uh, you know, uh, it takes him his working hours, you know, throughout the whole year about, okay, to write one proposal, it takes him about three months. He'll dedicate three months solid to write a good proposal to submit. Hence, that's why we wanted you all to write uh, the top drawer because, you know, um, me included, uh, we have this very bad habit, uh, me as well, uh, you know, okay, there's call for grants, okay, yeah, we know, okay, let's wait. Uh, two weeks before, we said, okay, oh, deadline is, is two weeks, okay, let's start writing down. Okay, of course, we can't write a very good proposal. There was one uh, lecturer who actually was a visiting lecturer at engineering, okay, and he was supposed to be here for a year, but he was only here for about two months and then he wanted to leave. So, I mean, he left. So, and I asked him, why did he leave? He said, because, you know, they are called for NIH grants and I need about three months uh, to five months to actually get a good proposal out. So, he went back because he needed to write the proposal and sit down and think. In our case, we'd like take two weeks. Of course, you know, our proposal will not be, will not be as strong. Uh, this is why we wanted uh, you to have a top drawer, meaning you already have the idea, put it down somewhere, uh, you know, uh, when uh, the call come, then, uh, comes, then comes and we can actually sit down and actually maybe reformat, but at the same time we can actually, 
help to enhance the proposal. Okay. Uh, the um, the funding out there is not uh, very much. Okay, uh, uh, Malaysia, to be honest, uh, maybe is luckier because we have a lot of ministry funding. Okay, uh, elsewhere they may not have that. Okay, they they have to compete uh, globally. Okay, uh, so there are actually quite a number of publication uh, a big call for proposal internationally. Okay, industry is much more difficult because we have to forge uh, you know relationship with industries. But uh, international, there are quite a number of calls. Okay, so occasionally uh, you see, you know, uh, at UM Info, right? You see call or UM Research. We have call for this, call for that. Recently, uh, in fact, yesterday also I saw one. Okay, uh, UM Research. So uh, uh, people at IPPP actually do do actually look into this. Sometimes when they get call and you know they actually will blast. Uh, it's just that the numbers that come in to apply for it is uh, are very small. Okay. Uh, but uh, you know, um, uh, it's not easy. We actually do crawl, crawl, crawl the, uh, you know, the web to find, you know, uh, if there is any calls, uh, which sometimes we miss. Uh, uh, you can actually go to IPPP and the cluster to ask for help because they would know sometimes, uh, you know, if there are, you know, way to actually apply. Uh, one of the things that we wanted you to do with the research uh, top drawer is actually so that we can actually look at it and see whether we can actually as uh, you know uh, management and uh, you know uh, research management team sometimes we do plan actually uh, currently that's one of the things that we are hoping to do we do plan at looking at this research proposal and then we take it up to you know the various funding agents or the ministry and say look we have a very good idea here <laughs> fund us it's a long process, but you know, uh, but we, we, when we go out, we need to have something. We cannot just go out and say, okay, give me money. Okay. Of course they were not. So we say we go in. Okay. Uh, we have one very good initiative that is being done by a uh, cluster. I think uh, Prof. I Dr. Ivy and Prof. Hasib was doing, working with Aislangu. We all know we have problems with, with Aislangu. We keep getting no water. So, you know, uh, Prof. Hasib and uh, Dr. Ivy are working together with a team from engineering and also uh, bringing in some from uh, geography, I think, uh, you know, and they actually went to approach Aislangu and say, okay, here, I have this money, uh, this proposal, okay, to, how to help solve you, your problems. Okay, and then they, they come back to us and say, we don't want you to solve this problem, but we want you to do this problem. Okay, but you know, uh, but it's a long negotiation, but you know, hopefully we'll get some funding at the end. Uh, you know, we also have people, uh, you know, from economy, for example, uh, uh, Prof. Terence actually tried to look at uh, food security and pull in a team and say, okay, let's go and meet yes, Sam Dabi, for example, help us this, with this, yeah. But you know, uh, so this is how we actually work now because it's not very easy even uh, internationally the fund is very limited and internationally it is even worse because you are competing globally so you know you have your proposal has to be very strong uh, we cannot rely on uh, local funds or uh, you know uh, are you because this is not sustainable and it will go away you know, uh, we do not know how much more time that we have as are you we may not have uh, any more are fund and does that mean that when we when that happens, we have to stop doing research. Of course not, because you know this is our bread and butter, and also this, I hope, our passion. We always want to, you know, uh, uh, it's a quest of knowledge, and also want to push, you know, the boundary of knowledge. So I, of course, uh, you know, uh, you know, we are not going to stop. So we need to actually find uh, other sources or, you know, other um, other means of supporting. So, uh, and uh, you know, at at uh, at the management level, we we can help in, you know, uh, trying to actually bring out your proposal and then uh, you know uh, try to get funds from, you know, anybody. But you know, uh, we also need your help to come up with that that proposal. And uh, you know, um, I think unfortunately uh, we have been so uh fond of working uh, alone or in silo which doesn't work very well okay i think we have to work as a team okay we have to work as a team we have to learn to trust each other and to share okay because only then we can move forward i think uh, you know this is um i have to admit this is one of the witnesses uh that we have uh, in the university and i think uh, if you ask me this is one of my failure i think i was not able to 
break the silos okay uh, we were able to do very little things but you know we really want to break the silo and make the whole university work together as one so you know uh, you know instead of having you know um, same programs or same research programs you know various places we should just do it as one so we'll be stronger so uh, and and you know when the funds come in we can get bigger funds rather than small funds so uh, maybe this is how we can uh, we can you know uh, work together at this point uh, we we at management also are still trying very very hard to see if we can get you know funding hr another hr we have Seriously, uh, I think I have actually written uh, or met the ministry, you know, uh, people and met the minister three times, twice, three times, you know, trying to get more HRR fund or similar HR uh, programs. We have written, but, you know, uh, again, you know, I think uh, economically uh, is, is a very difficult, especially now uh, with the COVID. Even before the COVID, uh, we were like kind of begging, you know, uh, and, you know, uh, uh, and the last, uh, the last meeting we had before COVID was uh, quite positive, and then suddenly COVID, COVID happens. Uh, then you know, of course, all the funds will go somewhere else. So you know, uh, but we're still trying. Okay, but I would like to answer Prof Zahiruddin's uh, uh, Fitri's question on, on how do we get undergraduate to be active in research, not just postgraduate. And I really like that because I think. As a research university, we're just not doing, you know, we're not just staff doing research. It is a research university. Everybody do research, uh, including our, you know, our our um, our administrative staff. You know, they in order for them to actually uh, serve us better, they they do some research to see how they serve us better. And I think undergraduate is very important uh, for undergraduate to as also be active in research. So you know, um, to me. Um, you know, I think uh, the curriculum or the programs that we have at the faculty, uh, you know, uh, should also incorporate, uh, you know, elements of research or, you know, uh, uh, make uh, better yet, uh, you know, uh, incorporate our undergraduate into our research programs or research projects. I know uh, in engineering, they have been doing that. OK, uh, they actually do that. Uh, they have a special program also. They beg me for money, I know, <laughs> but they actually make that. Uh, uh, I didn't give them much. I didn't give them actually, but you know, they were able to actually try to see whether they can incorporate, and they did incorporate it in, into their uh, bring in the students. And um, you know, I um, I feel that you know, as undergr undergraduate, uh, you know, if you spend time uh, doing research with the researchers and postdocs and postgrad in the lab, you think uh, your your mind is. Uh, will work better you think you know you you think faster i think or create more creative uh, because i i uh, remember when i was a graduate student i had one undergraduate uh, student working in the lab with me and you know uh, the way they think uh, you know uh, will help much better and actually it also gets them excited in their core uh, in whatever they are learning you know because they can see how uh, what they are learning uh, uh, actually applies to uh, you know, in 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 the world, maybe. Okay, so uh, you know, I um, at the moment, I think the the university or uh, most faculties or would have a, a final year project, undergraduate projects. Uh, that's good. Uh, that's fine. Uh, but I wish uh, you know they would start from the beginning. I mean, like uh, in I know FSKTM. I think they did it in first year. Okay, start start during term break. Go into you know the research. Uh, lab. I have uh, in my lab, uh, I have, uh, you know, because um, I'm a mentor for the Chemistry Olympiad program. So, uh, you know, these, uh, you know, students who actually the competitor who goes to Chemistry Olympiad after they come back from competition, uh, you know, they get very excited and, you know, interested and they actually spend time in my lab and while waiting for their STPM result to come out or waiting for them to go to the university. They spend time in my lab, about two or three of them actually sometimes over the first year come in and actually they sit down with my student and actually really do some of the work that some of the research work. In fact, I have one student, uh, one from six student which actually publish, uh, I mean, we wrote paper and published a paper with his name on it. So I and he got very excited. He went to Imperial, uh, you know, subsequently, but, you know, he got very, very excited, uh, you know, uh, which I think, you know, is something that we have to encourage so that we see our young people uh, being passionate in doing what they do and just not, you know, uh, 
just passing the motion through, you know, through life. So perhaps that's how we can do, uh, you know, our, you know, research, uh, Dr. Zairuddin, uh, bring in our undergraduate into our programs, uh, give them some special tasks, you know, and they know that they are contributing to some bigger picture, perhaps. Okay. Um, like I, I, fully, I fully agree with that that notion of uh, getting them involved early and having them in the culture of research from the very beginning. Um, I do that in my lab as well, uh, Dr. Zahir, and I think everyone can even leverage on the course that they are doing, that the lab courses, the, the, the culture of writing a good report, the culture of collecting data independently without a, you know, a strict guideline. Those are research um, elements being taught bit by bit without them realizing and yeah, um, having an attachment in the lab just for us to be more open and that could be that could be the solution or the partial solution of us not having um, enough money for RA and you know uh, things like that. Um, there's a question from Prof. Nur Suzia Suzaini. Uh, is there possible to have a look at utilizing the research leave for publication purposes since we are in MCO? So we're talking about COVID now. Um, research leave public for publication purposes. That's should be allowable, right, Prof? Yeah, there's no problem. Uh, you know, uh, I think um, from experience, yeah, uh, Dr. Suziani, I'm just talking about myself. Uh, when I was uh, a young lecturer, actually, I do, um, you know, use this to my advantage as much as possible. Uh, you know, uh, every break, every year, for every break time, uh, you know, uh, the three, the between semesters break, okay, I will find funds, not university funds, I will find a fellowship, okay, and I will go out uh, for research leave so that I can actually do research and actually write. So, you know, uh, and that is something that uh, has helped a lot because you are away from the university, so you're not too worried about, you know, <laughs> your students not doing very well, uh, you know, or, you know, or some administrative duties that you have to do because you actually can concentrate. So you, you can take research leave, this is allowable. Uh, you can apply uh, for research leave, especially if you don't have classes. Also, the idea is, you know, uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, um, sometimes uh, we need to do a little bit of planning. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes you may need more than, I mean, because sometimes you can get funds uh, for six months uh, instead of, I mean, you can apply for funds or you can write to your friend who may have, I mean, the least uh, you can do is write to your friends who may have research fund and then they say, oh, I have some research fund, I can give you some postdoc fund, okay? Uh, you, take you in as a postdoc in my lab, okay? But I want you to stay there for six months. So, you know, you because of the way that we do semester, maybe we can actually teach for the six months all our courses and then take the other six months, uh, you know, uh, the second semester for our research leave, for example. You know, but you just need to, that needs planning. But, you know, uh, for the term break, I think, you know, you can go on research leave. People have taken like two weeks, three months, you know, uh, the whole of the research research break time to do research, uh, to go on research leave. So, uh, do take that opportunity if you can, because I know, um, I know especially for uh, arts and humanities and for social science, uh, you need time to think, uh, you know, you need to be away from everybody else and sit down to write good paper. So, uh, that's a that is uh, an opportunity that you can actually use, uh, you know, to try and see whether you can get, uh, you know, some good output on it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Prof. Um, uh, we do have 90 days, right, Prof? Uh, research yes. that yes, uh, some of us new lecturers may not know about this until someone tells them. So, yeah, yeah I, I also realised that quite a uh, few years into my career, and, oh, will you have research leave 90 days? So you don't yeah. have to take the whole 90 days. Some some are um, yeah. misled into you have to find a block of 90 days which you can't do. So you just maybe two weeks, one week, three weeks, whichever works for you, right, Prof? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, but you know you can get longer terms like that because you know especially if you have good collaborators and good friends who says, I mean, I have friends. I I I I remember. Okay, one of the place I went to was uh, Switzerland for about uh, three months. I actually received, I actually got some, I mean, I actually applied for a fellowship and I got a fellowship. Um, but Switzerland is a very, very expensive country, right? So, you know, I went to Switzerland. I only got this much, but, you know, uh, my collaborator there was very, very nice. He said, it's okay, I will top up. 
Oh. Uh, you know, uh, so in the end, you know, he tops up uh, for me and I don't actually even sleep. I stayed in a hotel for the three months because he paid for it, you know. Uh, so uh, I think you can. And of course, you know, I was to, to say that the, the work that I did there and the paper that we wrote is one of the highly cited that I have amongst my paper. So, you know, I mean, there are ways, you know, um, uh, I'm, I don't know. You know, uh, for 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 the younger ones who came in, you know, uh, like Dr. Asa, you see you came in with your MRG, you already have money. So, you know, uh, maybe, you know, it's a bit diff different than what we faced during our time. Uh, when I came in, there was nothing. Uh, there was not even IRPA. Okay, show you how old I am. So we had like a uh, kind of word F and the first word F I got, I cried because I only got 3,000. What can I do with 3,000, you know, uh, as a chemist, you know? Uh, to buy uh, one glassware, you know, <laughs> maybe I can just buy three glasswares, okay, at that time. And it takes months for the thing to come. So you need to be creative on how to do this. So that's why I say every three months I find ways, I find, and you have more opportunities because now, uh, you know, there are a lot of fellowships out there for younger people, you know, below 40, below 45, you know, uh, you know, apply for that, spend time uh, outside, make connections, do work with people out there, uh, you know, uh, make sure that you actually go and work. Like that. <laughs> but, you know, it does help. Uh, and, you know, uh, once you actually do that, you make connection, you know, this and especially if you do good work, these people will actually continue collaborating with you. I mean, my collaborators in, 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 in Japan actually send chemicals from Japan to me. I never received them because it got stuck in custom. So I couldn't even see it got stuck. But you know, sampai sekarang, <laughs> that was in 1990, early 20s, but uh, early 2000. But you know, um, uh, so you know, it got stuck. Uh, but you know, that's how kind they are uh, if you actually work with them well and do work. They are willing to send you things. So they send you chemicals. They say, oh, I said, I don't have this. I cannot move. He said, okay, I'll send the chemicals. So he sent the chemicals. And when he came, he brought it in his bag. So, <laughs> so you know, I think uh, you need to actually look at uh, making good collaborations. Okay. Uh, next. I think we are so used because we younger ones like me, we come in with money already mm. handed to you. So we don't know how it tastes like to work for money and that the excitement of, of getting, working, it, yeah. getting that money and you know, yeah. so I guess um, after after too many scaffolding, uh, too, too long of a scaffold years, when the money is slowly taken away from you, then you, you don't know what to do uh, because you're not accustomed to being agile and resourceful. So perhaps that what that's uh, something that ADEC ourselves could look into, into how to train or how to um, help in terms of them seeing um, what, how to, how to work with less money. Yes. I think that's the question. Yes. Um, people are so used to having money in their hands. If there's no money, I cannot work. So, uh, but actually, as you have mentioned uh, rightfully a few times, many, many times that we can work with less money. One way is the um, undergraduate programs, maybe we should talk to our head of department, our deans, how to make leverage on you know, these highly talented young people who are very energetic, very, um, you know, they're so innocent and pure and, you know, excite, easily excited of, of and, and they're so young and, you know, they don't think of family or money or anything mm. like that. So perhaps that's another um, focus we should try to look into. Yeah, because they're very, very, they very creative group. You know, I remember when uh, I, I mentioned to you I was poor <laughs> before, I, before I managed to get money, okay? You know, I had students and, you know, we wanted to do, I mean, uh, a new tech, not new technology, but new platform, uh, you know, which nobody has done in Malaysia, you know, and I actually went to Purdue uh, to actually do this work and I came back. Uh, and in Purdue, I see a few things that, you know, how they actually make this thing because, you know, it's not, it's very expensive to buy. So when I uh, come uh, and they have money, so I came back and we have no money. Uh, but how to do this, you know? So I had one student, yeah, very clever student, very creative student. He 
so I just told him, okay, this is this is what I did, and I need we need to do this. Uh, we need to actually find a way to do this, but I, we cannot afford to buy. So he went home, and he used his old um, uh, fan that doesn't work anymore. His father is a mechanic, so he actually improvised it, and then he took it to the lab one day and said, here. And I said, what? We can use this, okay? So that's how creative he is. So, you know, uh, then subsequently when you see my, uh, when I have money, my student will say, I don't have, we don't have this. Can we buy, you know? Sometimes I feel that maybe we shouldn't encourage that, you know, but of course they want to move fast. But, you know, uh, you know, we need to actually be a little bit clever. So if you go to my lab now, I mean, I keep telling my students this, so they try to be clever as well. So they went to Daiso recently and <laughs> bought something that is firing gate and to do an aspirator and you know and when the minister came to visit my lab recently she looked at this and said what is this you say we bought in Daiso because we have no money so we actually make something out of that and it cost us only about 10 ringgit two things okay uh, but the student was creative enough to actually do uh, you know some uh, you know maneuvering and actually manage to get the aspirator up so you know I think sometimes uh, you know uh, when you are creative enough, you know, you'll be able to actually do something. So, uh, you know, I think uh, this is what we need to encourage, uh, you know, the creativity. Yeah. And and the, the the link between the research and teaching, we, we if you strengthen that, the synergy that we could get out from it, I think that would be wonderful. We have one question from uh, Dr. Saad Tayyab. Uh, is there any program or strategy in UM to reutilize the grants which have been unsuccessful from the higher ministry? Uh, reutilize the grants or the proposal you mean? Reutilize the grants. I think he means reutilizing the proposals. Grant, think, grant proposals. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, you know, um, yeah. Uh, in fact, actually what we ask people to do is to actually relook at this and look at the uh, the criticism or, you know, the, the comments that come back and say why it's not successful. Uh, you know, uh, it could be um, Yes, uh, you know, in some cases we we actually do this, uh, especially when researchers come come to us. Uh, I mean, to IWP and say, you know, we want to redo. Uh, we can reuse it as top drawer, make it better, and put it as top drawer. Yes, uh, I don't see a problem. Mm. Usually, we actually should actually really look at why it was unsuccessful, uh, because I mean. Uh, you know, we fought a lot, uh, uh, or rather, you know, in, at my level, we fought a lot with the ministry in uh, telling them to tell us exactly why it was rejected. So that, not because, you know, sometimes we understand because, the, you know, they, are, they say that they only have uh, funds enough for maybe 700 projects, but they are getting like 3,000, 4,000, uh, or even, you know, uh, you know 10,000 proposals, right? So, um, you know, but we want to know exactly, uh, you know, why it's rejected, not because, you know, we want to question them, but because it is good for us, then we can fix it. We know what is wrong and we can actually enhance the proposal. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, uh, I think uh, researchers should do that. Yeah, writing uh, proposals is also a learning process, right, Prof? Yes, yes. So, yes. There's one from uh, Dr. Lee Hai Yen. Prof, mm -hmm. there are many highly cited professors who are retiring or retired are not being continued due to budget cut. Upon retirement, these people are also hired by other universities in which the citations they accumulate is now with another university. Is that true? I'm not um, sure if their citation with the university can remain. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, it's very, very tough. We would like to keep these professors, <laughs> but of course we have no funds, okay? So there are uh, various things that university is doing. Okay, one is uh, uh, you know you know about the professor Koroman. Uh, professor Koroman actually uh, are the universities uh, university professors uh, who are retired, but actually still want to contribute to the university. They don't actually get paid. Okay, and we have quite a number of them. Uh, you know, uh, they actually come voluntarily and say, okay, I have uh, students still. I still want to do research. Uh, you know, can I be attached to this uh, center, for example, and actually continue doing research with, uh, you know, the the, uh, the researchers in the group. Okay, we have quite a number of this uh, Professor Kohorman and they are doing it for free. Uh, 
we also have, uh, fortunately for us, uh, you know, uh, many of our professors uh, who actually do go out and work uh, in other universities, uh, they are also um, still very loyal to UM, I think, you know. So when they work with university, they still work with us, okay. So they, when they publish, they actually still publish with uh, University of Maya, mainly because they are still attached to some of the centres. I mean, uh, one very good example, but of course, then she is now Emeritus Professor Prof. Fang Siu Moi, actually, is a very good example. She still works with IOS uh, and actually still publishes. Of course, uh, you know, the other university gets, uh, you know, the name as well because the, she is paid by that university and actually work in that university, but she collaborates with IOS and use, you know, some of the facilities that we have. So again, this is our big chance of uh, collaboration, uh, Dr. Lee, because, you know, uh, when, uh, you know, they go out there, Okay, um, especially if they go to, uh, you know, uh, private universities or smaller universities. Okay, the facilities that they have is not as good as what we have here. Okay, we have a dismal facilities, but they may have even worse facilities. So they need the facilities. Plus the fact that because they have been part of our team for a long time. Okay, and if it's a good, good team, you know, anyway, they will I mean, they will still come back and actually work with us. Okay, so so far, uh, you know, we 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 are uh, okay with this, uh, with the fact that you know when they publish, they still uh, you know uh, will work with uh, you know uh, members of the university, and there will be also uh, you know another member from the university that publish the same paper, which generates the same citation. But uh, we need to actually work with them, uh, and and a lot of this. Uh, retired professors because they are professors. I mean, uh, you know, academics and professors are a different breed. You know, you just don't stop work. Uh, you know, uh, and you actually work. I mean, you are working for passion, not for for job or money, right? Because that's why you do the research because you are interested and you are passionate about it. So they will continue. Uh, I have, uh, you know, uh, professors who come to me and say, you know, I'm retiring, so can I continue as a professor co I said. I would love you for you too. I have no money. They say, okay, no need, no need, no, no need to have money. But I want to actually make sure that this particular program that you know we you have started and you, they are very passionate about it. They want it to to move. Then uh, I said, fine. So we attach them to that center, for example. So yes, uh, we do lose them. My uh, the sadness is that you know I cannot use them anymore because I use them a lot. Uh, I mean, these professors they are very highly known. Highly cited, so I push them into think tanks all over, right? But when they retire, you know, I cannot force them to do that anymore. Uh, but they come back to help us in the research publication. But you know, it is really sad that we cannot uh, continue them. But as a professor, Coromat, they have access to all our facilities here. They have the access to the library for free. Uh, we are talking even to let them have, uh, you know, the UM email for life, you know, if they want to. So, you know, there are some things that we give, not as much as what we would like to give, but, you know, uh, but when they go to the other universities as well, we do have one professor who went to another university um, and actually uh, come back to us and say, can, can I be Kormat, you know, uh, I mean, like the, the UM expert, just the UM expert thing is something that they are, they are very happy to have, you know, because it helps them with their CV. So, you know, and they said, and I said, well, what about the other university? They said the other university does not have this. So, you know, so I, I uh, so I think, uh, you know, that's, uh, we can leverage on this. We can still, especially because we are, I mean, uh, the younger, lect younger, younger uh, lecturers, uh, you know, these are your mentors, okay? Uh, you know, they have helped uh, you maybe, and they have mentored you before. So continue with them, uh, working with them. You know, and hopefully we can move. And it's good uh, if they move, we also move. Okay, and if you know we move, the other universities also will move with the uh, with UM, and that brings the whole uh, you know uh, environment and the and the innovative and creative environment within uh, you know Malaysia to a, high, a better level. So the idea is, you know, when we move forward, everybody else will move with us. So you know, not that we move forward, leave everybody behind. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Something that we like to do, but you know, but in actual fact that you know that is not a good a good motto, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's true. Uh, we see a lot of uh, other universities in Malaysia catching up with us and yes. having, having uh, access to things that well we thought 
we could actually do that, but why didn't we think of that? You know, things like that. So where we go to innovation competitions and um, um, exhibitions, so we could see that uh, a lot of things are happening that we could actually do because we are UM. Um, mm. Yeah, I think um, having that 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 bird's eye view will also help us in in opening our mind that um, it's not just about mon yes money, but there are other things that we can be creative about and, and, and think of and leverage on. There's a question here from Dr. Farah Dina, our director of ADEC. Prof, if academic, especially from social sciences discipline, would like to apply for international grants, where can we get some sort of mentoring? Is there any research clinic or mentoring sessions offered at the central level? Yes, actually there are research clinics. Okay, uh, um, I, I'm not sure whether cluster has come out uh, now with Glenda. They, they do carry out uh, workshops and clinics thematically uh, at PPP as well, but I think now the role is being done by cluster more. Um, uh, my suggestion is actually do contact the clusters. They are very good group of people there. You know, I'm. They have moved. Uh, you know, progress. You know, they've been. Uh, you know, and they've. We we learn because you know we don't know what what to do before, right? But now, you know, we have a very good team there. Uh, you know, the cluster deans and the deputy cluster deans are always willing to help. Uh, you know, do contact them, uh, and they will set something up. If they cannot help you, they'll try. They because they would know. Uh, you know, other researchers or other people who can help, you know, uh, or willing to help. So they'll be able to connect you to them. Uh, you know, like for example, uh, you know, IPOP, uh, or if you cannot go to cluster, go to IPOP, uh, you know, uh, there are people there, uh, you know, Prof Shaliza and the, the team, and Dr. Tan, uh, who is actually very, Dr. Tan Siawe, who is actually very, very well versed in, you know, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, international uh, applications, for example. Okay, she will be able to help. You know, uh, go there and you know, uh, uh, ask them for help because they are, that's what they are there for. And uh, if they are not able to help, they will be able to sh point out. They have, for example, they have had, uh, uh, you know, um, workshops on, you know, applying how to apply, uh, you know, the uh, LRGS and call, you know, the successful people who got LRGS to tell you exactly what they do, how to do, what to do, etc., etc. So uh, do go there. There are clinics and uh, mentoring session, uh, you know, being offered in the cluster. Uh, they, they are they are they are very overworked there. There are not many people there, but you know, but they they also have uh, others uh, others other resources that that uh, and we also have some again some professor cohorts, uh, you know, who are very willing uh, to actually sit down. I have one professor who. Uh, who sits in the F, he's retired, but he, because he's a professor, he, he's able to sit in one of the panel for PRGS, uh, uh, TRGS, and he told me that, you know, he's happy to sit down with the UM uh, researchers because he sees UM research uh, proposal going into the, you know, uh, into the central as not being able to address what they want or to match exactly what was required by the, the commentarian. So he said he's willing to actually sit down. Uh, it's just that a matter of, you know, uh, people wanting to come and, and actually um, work with an open mind. Uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, this is sometimes a bit of my frustration. Uh, you know, people come uh, when people get rejected and we actually uh, say maybe we can, uh, you know, uh, work with, you know, trying to actually strengthen this, you know, they say no. Uh, because they think their proposal is already good as it is, or because they think they are the expert and you know, and people do not know what you know they are trying to say, you know, uh, you know, and and actually, uh, you know, maybe not, but you know, if you actually sit together, you can actually tease it out. I mean, to me, is uh, <clears throat> if you actually talk to somebody who doesn't know uh, exactly what you're talking about, it is a better situation because now you're trying to understand. Uh, and make them understand. When you're trying to make them understand, you're actually going to go into deeper and deeper and better. Or maybe then you realize, actually, you know, what I'm trying to say is not something that, you know, is coherent. Nobody understands this. So I can write it better, you know, after talking to somebody who maybe do not know, uh, you know, what you're talking about. So perhaps, you, you know, uh, that is, uh, you know, uh, what, what we should do when we go in, uh, go in with an open mind. Uh, and the clusters uh, and IPOP will be able to help you. 
Thank you, Prof. I would like to invite uh, Prof. Sarina Lau, who mentioned something on the on the comment section. Prof. Sarina, would you like to switch on your um, camera and uh, microphone? Would you like to elaborate on your comment on the chat section? Hi, 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 uh, Dr. Noaiza and uh, Prof. Uh, Nosada. Yeah, uh, this is based on your comment that you have uh, earlier raised. Uh, you know about you know uh, you being given all the funds you know in a silver plate uh, and what have you and then right now because of the emergency that we are going through we are all having problems trying to find our own source uh, of funding uh, now my, my question is this because um, I think there's a pool of uh, people that I think we are not or UM is not fully utilizing. And these are the pool of people uh, who are about to retire or who have retired. Uh, I know Prof Nosada has mentioned just now about those very little group of uh, honorary professors, yeah, and who are here to help as well. But those who are not conferred the honorary professor and who have applied for it, and I think they are very willing, yeah, to contribute based on the knowledge and expertise that they have. And uh, very much so, I feel that, you know, we should fully capitalize and fully utilize them in terms of mentoring uh, the younger one. And if I may, uh, since you have asked me to speak, uh, Prof. Nosada, I feel that in certain faculty, uh, UM is kind of stingy in giving honorary professorship and also professor emeritus. What is your opinion on this, Prof. Nosada? Thank you. OK, thank you, uh, Prof. Serena. No, I completely agree with you. Um, okay, um, you know, um, the <laughs> Professor Kohorma actually uh, idea started, uh, you know, um, uh, at, at our level originally, okay, and, uh, and then suddenly it went uh, to the faculty. Uh, you know, the idea was uh, originally was for, for, you know, these professors who are retired to, to still be mentors. But uh, when they go to faculty, you know, it depends on what faculty needs. And faculty said, I mean, I, I really don't know what what is, uh, you know, uh, uh, faculty's uh, agenda or, you know, uh, directions. So, um, Prof. Sarina, um, uh, as of uh, last year, as of last year, uh, uh, late, uh, mid last year, okay, middle of last year, Professor Kohormat's uh, appointment or uh, extension or whatever, okay, or uh, whatever you want to call them, okay, now has been placed under the NCPNI's office. So, you know, uh, and the idea is, uh, you know, is uh, what uh, the PNI team has always had before is for you to mentor researchers. And uh, we actually uh, now hope to connect you to, uh, you know, either research teams or research groups or research centers, okay? So, uh, you know, you, you can actually spend time with the, the younger researchers or members of the research, especially if you belong to a research center before, you know, you can still be, uh, uh, you know, at the research center. So, if faculty needs your help to teach or whatever, they can approach you. But, you know, we hope to put you more at a central level uh, rather than at faculty level because you're, we, uh, we are rather, we do not feel that, uh, you know, uh, we really need the professors to teach anymore because they probably have people to teach. But what we need these professors are to mentor and to help the younger ones to actually gain the experience and reach the level where you are already. So this is what we are doing at the moment. Uh, so I am now uh, the first batch, okay, finally this year, for, uh, it's generally the first batch of the new uh, Professor uh, Kohormat who are actually coming in or, or have applied to come in as Professor Kohormat and have also asked to, uh, for extension actually has come to my table. Uh, then I asked them, uh, uh, because it comes also still to fac faculty, because I wanted to make sure that you know, uh, Professor Kohormats, uh, you know, are used with the right purpose, which is actually mentoring the younger uh, researchers. So hopefully we can actually uh, make this better. Uh, okay, so, uh, you know, uh, we can even put them in ADAC because, you know, they have, uh, you know, experience in, uh, you know, uh, teaching and research in, uh, you know, education, for example. So, you know, put them in ADAC. Uh, you know, instead of faculty of education, because, you know, maybe faculty of education, uh, they will be much more limited by ADAC, they're central, they can do more, uh, you know, so uh, that's what we are doing at the moment. Uh, inshallah, we'll, 
you know, we, we hope we can actually do better with that. And I agree with you. I don't know why we are stingy. To me, as long as, uh, you know, the professors can uh, uh, contribute in one way. Of course, I think, uh, you know, uh, it is also, um, we also uh, uh, do not want uh, uh, the professors to actually make use of UM's name. Uh, I'm a professor Kohoma in UM, but actually go somewhere else and teach, but not actually do anything for UM. Okay, that that is uh, the other the other uh, flip of the coin uh, of which we do have, unfortunately, lah, and, but not many, and we cannot cannot punish the rest for one or two. But you know, I think uh, in general, uh, you know, uh, these professors who have actually approached us, they really do know what they want to do, and they really do want to contribute. So we really appreciate that. And hopefully we can actually make this uh, better and like, formalized. Because I know, uh, you know, some of the professors <laughs> who actually were previously at the faculty, uh, you know, they say that they are professor Kormak, but they are not being used or they do not know what to do, you know, because when they come in, they have no rooms, nothing to do. So, uh, you know, I've actually had a chat with, uh, you know, a group of professor Kormak last year. Uh, because, uh, uh, you know, before before taking over that, that uh, you know, organized uh, administrating of uh, Professor Goromai. And I did mention that if you don't have spaces, uh, we're going to actually use, you know, uh, shared spaces like cubicles in um, uh, HR building where we have, you know, cubicles, which, you know, we can, you can come in, sit there, you know, use that. And I'm sure ADAC will be happy because now they have Professor Kohoma in front of their face that they can use. But you know, uh, so that's that's the idea, Rosarina. Hopefully, uh, we'll do better, inshallah. Thank that you. is a really encouraging, really encouraging um, news, Prof. Ada. Um, I would like, to, uh, we, we are at 11.40 right now. Um, we have about 20 minutes left. And um, I think um, we haven't talked too much about innovation and um, IP and commercialization. There is one question at the end of the chat section uh, from where was it? The, uh, Tamil Mani. Hi, Prof. What is the future of the PhD graduate who have filed a patent based on their PhD research work? Dr. Tamil, would you like to switch on your um, microphone and elaborate on your question? Are you there? Or maybe I read it out. Um, uh, what is the future of the PhD graduate who have filed a patent based on their PhD research work, which shows a novelty approach in the fabrication of no novel nanomaterial, for example? Um, if the novel nanomaterial owes promising prospect in many areas, how UM research and innovation going to improve the research and development in this aspect? So perhaps um, maybe Prof. Nur Sada can shed some light into the ownership of the IP, Okay. Um, the innovation bit, the um, prospect on that, maybe? Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, first, uh, in terms of IP, okay, this one we, we got to uh, be a bit clear, okay? The ownership is, uh, the owner of the IP is the university, okay? Uh, the inventor is a student and the supervisor maybe, but the owner of the technology or the IP is the university, okay? Mainly because it's done in the university, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, uh, uh, maybe funded by the university, etc. Okay, and also uh, patented, uh, uh, filed for patent uh, by the university. Okay, having said that, okay, uh, you know, uh, UMI, uh, UM, UMCIC actually, uh, now is uh, actually we have uh, new programs, okay, um, uh, you know, led by UMCIC and uh, ICE, UM ICE, okay, under Professor uh, Rafin, uh, Rufina, uh, previously Prof. Fatima and now Dr. Ivy, okay, uh, called Deep Tech, okay, uh, which is something that we want, okay, so that means what we want to do is for you to have a startup based on the technology that you want, okay, uh, based on the technology that you have actually created or invented, and actually, uh, you know, uh, move this to the next level uh, in terms of commercialization. So we have a deep tech uh, program uh, of which we started off with 13. Uh, after the program, I think we now have, we can safely say uh, that we have 10, 10 technology ready to push out. One of which I think is doing 
not in the deep tech, unfortunately, because it went through a lead program, which is doing very, very well, that, uh, you know, we actually are licensing it out to a, a company in the UK for a very high price. Okay, uh, which we will announce once we get good news. Lah. Yeah. But, uh, okay, uh, but what we wanted to do, okay, and this is what I think, you know, uh, uh, we, we are slow and we would like to push into the innovation agenda. Uh, an entrepreneur agenda is that you know the technology that we have that you know the the, the students uh, do for their PhD with their supervisor, if it can be actually commercialized, uh, uh, we can actually we would like to have uh, you know uh, a startup company, but not run by the professor, the student, the PhD student should actually take it up and build this 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 startup. Uh, be an entrepreneur, be the CEO of the, the, the startup and actually move the technology forward, okay? We want the, the, the researcher or the, the, the professors to stay in because these are our golden goose laying the, uh, I mean the goose, uh, geese or goose uh, laying the golden egg, you know, uh, and we want them to keep on laying more golden eggs. But, you know, the golden egg that they have laid, okay, the students, with the student who actually know the work can actually move this technology further, okay, out. Uh, and through, uh, you know, maybe a startup company, uh, which, uh, you know, we do now have at UMCIC. We have a program, uh, you know, uh, business spot where they actually look at, at what you have and try to help to grow. And we have the uh, now the UM Deep Tech uh, program. Uh, we hope that we can enhance uh, or continue this UM Deep Tech program where we actually bring in the student, especially, okay? to train them to actually move this startup company with their supervisor or the, the you know, their, their, the, the professors that are there. Uh, similarly, if Professor Kohorma is interested, then they can also be involved in this. But, you know, um, uh, uh, so this student, okay, who have filed the patent, uh, maybe can go to perhaps better, uh, be back, uh, good for them to go to UMCIC I uh, speak with, uh, you know, people at UMCIC there and see whether, you know, there is uh, availability or possibility of, of you know, uh, of the student, uh, of, of a startup company uh, to be put under the UMD Tech pro Program. Uh, you can go with your supervisor especially, uh, but in the end, it will be the student who will be trained uh, to actually run the program like do business do pitching of the product do business plan etc etc so that we can then subsequently push you out to pitch for venture capitalists outside so once we have this hopefully you know we have the startup which actually can create jobs etc etc and the student the graduate student who graduated can be the ceo in fact we would like the person to be the ceo of that startup company because it is your work with your supervisor it's your you know, your your PhD thesis, for example, that you're pushing out, uh, which is something that is, uh, you know, what uh, we hope to do. Okay. That is, that is Prof. Mm. I can't hear. Prof. Asa, you're mute. Uh, okay. so you are breaking out. Okay, okay. I, that's a really nice um, insight and, and I hope it's a motivation to lecturers out there who have good PhD students are producing um, new and novel technology that they can encourage the students to proceed with the UMD tech program and being a CEO of their own university. Because um, I think uh, it's good for us to realize that the ownership belongs to the UM, but you still have the capacity to bring it forward as far as you want to go with it. Um, Hang on, let me. I have more questions. But. Yeah, Dr. Ong. Uh, Salam Prof. Responsible conduct of research is very crucial, particularly during this challenging time. How do we continue to cultivate and preserve research integrity in our research community? Okay. If yeah. I may add to that, uh, just as a preamble to your um, elaboration, we do have um, courses by ADEC on. Um, publication ethics on research conduct, but uh, perhaps um, Prof. Nur Sada, you want to elaborate a little bit more? Thank you, um, uh, Prof. Uh, uh, Dr. Azhar and uh, Prof. Uh, 
Okay, it's always very difficult. Okay, uh, you know, uh, because we we uh, hope that you know uh, that this uh, is already in in ingrained. But you know, uh, everybody is not the same. Okay, uh, so uh, sometimes people do uh, you know uh, desperate things uh, at desperate times. Okay, uh, and they forget about uh, you know ethics. So, uh, as Dr. Azza mentioned, uh, you know, uh, we hope that, you know, we can inculcate this not only just research culture, but also uh, integrity and research integrity and ethics uh, within, uh, you know, our, our researchers, uh, you know, um, and, you know, there are courses at, uh, you know, um, uh, ADEC that actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, we actually, uh, you actually get offered to, to people, right? And uh, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it is a compulsory one for the younger ones that come in, so that they understand the culture and the integrity. Uh, you know what is important, uh, especially in terms of ethics and integrity. There's also a move. Um, I'm not sure how how soon or how they will implement this. Uh, you know, um, uh, in, uh, by the ministry, they were they were talking about it right before the uh, COVID came. Okay, in that, you know, uh, before you can apply for the grants at Mohi, uh, that you have to actually uh, uh, indicate that you actually have taken a research ethics and integrity course, which was why one of the reason I think that actually moved to actually put that into their module for the younger lecturers, but. You know, they want it to be, they want you to actually have, uh, you know, uh, some kind of an indication evidence or certification that, you know, you have done this. Uh, okay, I have actually, uh, 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 you know, I've said at that level and say, you know, some of our professors, we know they're ethical because they have been professors for a long time and they have been publishing and doing the right thing for a long time. You cannot force them to take this course. But, you know, uh, this is what uh, perhaps the ministry is. Uh, trying to do. We know at UITM you must take this course first before you can apply. Uh, you know, uh, UM, we are doing it for the younger lecturers, okay, so that they are more ethical. I mean, not that they are not ethical before, I mean, they understood what it means. Okay, and, uh, you know, we will continue to do this. We do get some some problems uh, in this area. So, um, uh, at management, uh, we have already spoken uh, uh, to maybe the integrity uh, unit uh, to go down and maybe now keep giving talks on, uh, you know, uh, integrity and uh, um, ethics uh, and integrity issues uh, within, uh, you know, the university, especially on uh, research activities, because this will actually um, affect our reputation, academic reputation, because, you know, if people see this uh, and, you know, uh, and they will be claims by, you know, editor that, you know, people are giving fraudulent uh, results, blah, blah, blah. You know, this, this will affect our reputation, not only uh, university's reputation, but also the researcher's reputation. But this is very important. So uh, uh, we hope that, you know, um, through the program of ADEC, the younger ones actually will, uh, you know, understand more about, uh, you know, research integrity. And the senior ones, uh, you know, uh, we will actually uh, have some uh, thematic, uh, you know, talks uh, going down to faculty. Uh, integrity actually have uh, gone down to, you know, some faculties to actually explain what uh, it means, uh, you know, to have uh, integrity, research integrity, as well as, you know, other, other important, uh, you know, values that you actually need to uphold as a, as a researcher and as an academic. I hope that answers the question because, uh, you know, again, it boils down to individual, right? I mean, uh, hopefully, you know, we put in enough into a person's head to have that conscience. But sometimes, you know, uh, as I said, you know, it is something that uh, is not within our control. But, you know, uh, but hopefully, you know, if we actually talk about this enough, uh, you know, it will hit somebody's conscience and not, uh, you know, uh, they will not actually do something that is, you know, uh, not uh, legal or, you know, yeah. Ethical, legal or ethical. Or oh, ethical, yeah. yeah. Yes, because um, I, I do, I do uh, realize by talking to other people, our own um, academic staff, as well as um, academic staffs from 
outside of University of Malaya that um, because it has been a culture of doing something in a particular way, it does not it does not mean it's ethical, but it's done because it's done by you know um, people who are more respected. So at least um, if the dialogue and and discussions about what's okay and what's not okay, at least um, conscience are there, and mm. and we realize that it's not it's not a cultural thing to do. Then it's okay, you know. Mm. But we should have another session for that to talk a little bit more on on yes. the the fine line between legal and ethical. There's a gray area and all those things. So yeah, I think um, if we could have more sessions on that, they'll be useful too. Mm -hmm. um, there's another good question, I think, from uh, or a statement or suggestion from Dr. Lim Yet Yuan. If I may get you to switch on your microphone and camera, if you could re um, elaborate a little bit more. Dr. Lim, are you there? No prof. Company. It's about uh, using the UM fund to hire or pay postdoc for certain researchers or COE or HICO only. Would, would, do you like to talk about that? But, uh, okay. You know? uh. Let's read. <laughs> Rather than using UM's fund to pay higher postdoc for certain researchers or UM's or COE or high COE, can this fund be channeled to higher postdoc to build, maintain, and provide core research facilities to the whole university. Uh, the HR infrared is something is something like that. Uh, okay, I think what you are talking about is you know looking at the big equipment and you know who is going to handle them uh, and uh, you know uh, and uh, take postdocs to to actually. Uh, look after these facilities, okay? Now, uh, one thing that you have to understand, okay, is that postdoc is not a permanent thing, okay? Worldwide, <laughs> postdoc is a temporary thing, okay? Uh, you know, you may be a postdoc for one or two. It's not a position. It's a, 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 a thing that you actually do. So, it's not temporary. So, hiring postdoc to actually look after these facilities uh, especially very important, you know, high-end facilities. They'll be there for two years and then they go. And then another postdoc comes in for another two years. Okay, so, um, uh, you know, it may not be as, as good as, uh, you know, uh, having somebody permanent and knowing the, the equipment inside out. Uh, we do have, having said that, we do have uh, postdocs uh, who actually are assigned to, uh, you know, one or two uh, high-end equipment. Uh, not to look after the equipment, but because their research is in the, this area. And because their research is in the area, they know the equipment better and they know the equipment inside out. So they can do uh, better, they can actually uh, do better research and progress better. Uh, but you know, it's not a long term thing. Okay. The long term thing should be, in actual fact, uh, research officers and Pegawai Science. Okay. When uh, not when you mentioned not handled by pegawai science or penolong pegawai science that are not trained okay that is where we are lacking what we would like is to train the pegawai science to have more pegawai science uh, and to train them to actually uh, look after the the uh, the equipment okay and also engineers uh, as as much as possible because you know some of this equipment you know uh, would be very good for us to have engineer to look at so instead of when the equipment breaks down, instead of us calling the vendor from Japan and they send an engineer, we already have engineer in place. This we have been asking, okay, which we are not able to get, okay. So now uh, what we are trying to do is we are looking at some equipment and trying to centralize them, and then we are looking at Pegawai Science who have PhDs and they have there are quite a number of Pegawai Science on campus with PhDs in the area of which equipment they are trained in, okay. So they are, they are the good people to actually look into uh, looking at the central equipment to help service. Okay, and they are more permanent. They can still also, they can also be involved in uh, research with, you know, the team that is maybe using that, that equipment. We have one example, a person who's trained uh, with a PhD from microscope uh, on microscopes. And uh, she gives lectures in other universities on microscope, but she's only Pegawai Science. 
She's not a lecturer, she's a pedagogy science, but she knows the microscope inside out and we're hoping to centralize that and she will be in charge of it. And of course, she hopefully she can train more people, uh, you know. Um, but postdocs, uh, their main job, usually postdocs' uh, main job is to do, actually to help you do research. We used to say that um, the postdocs actually are the workhorse, I mean the students, PhD students are workhorse of research. It's not true. It's a postdoc. Because the PhD student, at the end of it, there is an end. P, uh, me, uh, method, what I mean by an end is the PhD student, there is a target that they have to produce a thesis and publish their thesis and get their degree. Okay, postdocs do not have this, so their job is actually really to push your research area forward. Okay, uh, and but it is not a permanent position. This one, a lot of people, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, mistake this by saying that it's a permanent. I mean, by saying that, you know, why can't we keep this postdoc? Postdoc is not a permanent position anywhere you go in the world. There's no position for postdocs, okay? But we do have, uh, you know, but we do have some requirement. For example, uh, in, in, in Korea, for them to be a lecturer, they must actually postdoc, uh, okay, for maybe about one or two years. Because this is the area where you train them to be kind of like an independent researcher. Because if you go uh, some, if you look at some of the universities, they are, they are question uh, for you when you apply for, you know, uh, like say a lecturer's position, they ask you, how long have you been a permanent, uh, an independent researcher for? Okay, meaning, how long have you actually postdocs? Uh, postdoc, uh, that means you don't actually uh, have a research that a supervisor actually tells you to do. Uh, that means you actually work with a team uh, on a certain area. You do have a supervisor, but you work on a team on a certain area, and you are actually independent. You don't need really a supervisor to hold your hands to tell you what to do at the end, right? So, uh, you know, that's that's uh, actually quite important. It's a training for you to be an independent researcher rather than a PhD student, uh, not to look after equipment. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that insight, Prof. Yes, um, we have reached the end. We have reached the end of the session. It's already 12 o'clock right now. There are a few more um, questions and comments, especially from uh, Dr. Muhammad Khairi Faiz. I, I would love to get to that comment, but uh, since we are getting to the end of the session, perhaps we could all um, just look at the comment sections. Um, I would like to conclude now. Uh, I'm really sorry I couldn't address all of the questions and comments that are here. There's a feedback form that uh, we would like you to fill up. It's in the comment section by uh, uh, our ADEX staff, Umu Saada. So if you could click on that, uh, after answering that um, feedback, you will get your certificate for attending this session. Dr. Azhar, uh, uh, if I may, uh, for those yes. questions that we have not addressed, uh, if you uh, would like me to answer them, can you email them to me? Then I can try to answer them. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for, for offering that, Prof. Yes. If any of you have any questions that we could not address in this two hours session. Uh, please uh, write to Prof. Nur Saada directly. Uh, TNC PI, yeah, the email address. Yes, and um, I'm sure Prof. Nur Saada is more than willing and happy to answer your queries and your questions. Mm. Uh, here is the feedback form. It's on the screen and also the link to it is also on the chat section. You could just click it uh, right now. Um, I would just like to summarize that we have gone through many, many, many important points and um, we talk about impact, we talk about ethics, we talk about um, the, the MIRA and the ranking system, how we as academic lecturers, uh, academic um, citizens of University of Malaya can, can help raise and, and, and put our effort where it counts in terms of the uh, ranking, the THD, QS, and of course, that's not the only thing. We have the pathway to impact, uh, relating our work with the SDGs. Um, Prof. Ada also have mentioned how we can, uh, the value of collaboration, and this does not, is not limited to MOA and MOU only, it's just a pure collaboration and honest working together with other um, universities from inside of Malaysia or even outside of Malaysia that will um, contribute to our academic reputation. 
and also um, how we can break the silos of working together as a team. And Dr. Farah asked about social sciences and hum humanities leading. How can the social sciences and humanities group lead a particular grant and uh, the cluster, the uh, humanities cluster under Prof. Ada's office is uh, very, very available and helpful in terms of um, mentoring how to write a good grant and address the right or a good question to address in order for you to get um, grants and, and, and do impactful work. So I guess um, I hope I've, I've summarized the whole session today, the two hour session. I'm so thankful to Prof. Nur Saada for your time. This is a really valuable um, two hours for us all. We could all see it's not all bed of roses. Um, challenges here and there and uh, it requires our mind shift on how to do things creatively and Prof. Nur Saada has reflected on how things were before we UM has a lot of money and we could get things done. So hopefully uh, with this session, we could all be a little bit more aware than before of how the research landscape in our university is. Um, for more questions and more comments, I welcome all of you to write to us in ADEC and also to Prof. Norsada herself. Uh, with that, I would like to thank Prof. Norsada again. Thank you so much and thank you everyone for listening and participating in our, our two hour session with our UM Star series. Thank you so much, everyone. See you again next time. Bye bye. Thank you, Dr. Azhar. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Adha. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Prof. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Prof. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Prof. You're welcome. Dr. Azhar. Ah, yeah. Gamba. Huh? Gamba. I thought you want to take picture. Salama. Pagi balik, pagi balik. Perasaan ada nanti. I forgot about the photo session. Alama, whoever's still around, would you like to switch on your camera and we'll call Prof. Nurse Ada again to join? <laughs> I'm so sorry, I forgot about that. Umu. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we, can we all switch on our camera? We have a big group photo of our first UM Star Series of 2021. And uh, I'll get Umu to come to start again. Thank you, Dr. Zahir. Dr. Mazlan, silakan uh, switch on camera, Dr. Ko. Thank you so much, Dr. Tamil. Hi, Dr. Sukmi. Dr. Nazatul. Hello. Uh, now I can see everyone's faces, yeah? Okay. I'm so sorry I forgot the gamba session. <laughs> okay. Dr. Uh, Dr. Ang, jangan tinggal dulu. Dr. Ang, switch on your camera. Uh, together mode. Yes, it's in together mode. This is the together mode. Uh, oh. Large gallery. Okay, we wait for Prof. Norsada to come back in, eh? I am so sorry. I forgot about that. Maybe next time. Let's get the mood. Let's get the mood before session start. Uh-uh, can. Okay. Sekejap ya, kita tunggu uh, Prof. Saada to come back. So how the session session went well? I hope it wasn't ended too abruptly. There were a lot of questions, but we have reached twelve o'clock. To yang I, okay, okay, habis habis. Lupa pula nak bergamba. Ah, kita kita tunggu Prof Nurse ada ya. Datuk Sukme, how are you? I'm good. Thank hey. you. <laughs> ah, we miss you in EDAC. You're one of the um, regular participants in EDAC and you've been doing very well, I heard. 
Yeah, thank you. Just wondering, um, for faculty of science members, academic staff, uh, are we encouraged to uh, write book and book chapters? Or only we focus on publications? What because I heard so, is uh, that mm -hmm. uh, the Prof. Hamdi, uh, Dato Hamdi, our new VC, is looking at mm -hmm. every publication and they're scoring every score for, yeah. for everything. Yeah, so I think we, if you ask me, mm. you go for Especially it. Yeah? Related to go our uh, research, those yes, yes. Um, book chapters or books uh, related to our research. Yes, yeah. yes, because books are more accessible to a lot more people yeah, rather than journal papers that where, that you know, they, they are and also the targeted audience. Yeah. The duration of citation will be longer as compared to our uh, publications, the journal mm, articles. That is That's yeah. very true. Yeah, go for it. For me, if it's not counted, even in my KPI, I will just do it. But I don't know, other people mm. may think differently. So my, if you ask me, I'll say just, yeah, let's 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 just go for it. Um, we're still waiting for Prof. Nur Saada. <laughs> Minta maaf. Prof. Uh, food. I don't know for how long. Alamak. Uh, kita ambil group photo dulu macam ni. Uh, Dr. Visha, how are you? Dr. Zahir boleh tolong capture kan ke? Okay. Are we ready? Yeah, ready. One, two. Oh, you're okay, fine. People coming. <laughs> Oh. Okay, let me paste that first and see how it looks. Okay. Kita masih sedang cuba dapatkan Prof Nur Saada ya, so that she's in the group picture. Uh, but if we couldn't, then this is good enough. Rahi, you paste that one there too. Look at chat eh. Ah, uh, dekat lah. Let, let me paste it at the chat. Uh. I saw Prof Yasmin just now. Is she still around? Prof Rofina Yasmin. Prof Yasmin, are you still around? That's one picture. Yes. Um, let's uh, have another. I don't know whether oh, that's better or not. Okay, okay. This is more like a cinema or a chip or something. Okay, so Dr. Kiran, Dr. Kiran dah hilang balik dah. Okay, so Ummu memang tak dapat eh Prof. Nur Saada to join balik. Uh, I don't think so, we can get her back. I'm okay. so sorry. Uh, maybe maybe next time this. when Prof. Kamila yes. section. Ah, uh, uh, okay. okay. Yes, thank yes. Thank you everyone. Maybe Ummu uh, okay. include dalam chat section tu lepas ni. Yeah, sure. Supaya you lupa, tak, tak terlupa. Okay, right. thank you everyone. Bye. Yeah. Have a good lunch. Thank you. Bye-bye. Assalamualaikum. Bye. 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 Bye.